everybody calls Han Solo a bitch. Bring him on. I prefer a straight fight to all this sneaking around. I don't know where you get your delusions, laser brain. Oh, come on, bro. It's the wars. So last week we got to get pumped up and excited about the return of the Clone Wars. And we don't even get a chance to let it breathe. We got rumors. We've got announcements. Just a flurry of them. This is the Wars and More. I'm Joe. And of course, with me to break all this down is my good buddy, Doug. Hey, Doug, how you doing this week? Doing pretty good, Joe. How are you doing? I'm. Uh, my head's about to explode, man. I'm telling you. Everyone's <laughs> like, like jumping ship, aren't they? <laughs> we didn't get a week. I know. <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Uh, I, I, I'm kind of blown away here at it's kind of, a lot of a lot of big deal type news going on. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it it didn't even make it to what like like Monday or Tuesday. Like, I know. Uh, it's about it. It's <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know which we one got we like three or first. four days, and it's like bam, 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 bam. Right. Just, just absolute craziness. Like, uh, I think we talked last week. We're we're excited to dive back into that episode and 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 really digest it. Right. Nope. Yeah, I know. Too many other things to uh, ponder here with all that's going down. Well, the good news is is we are we are still getting a new episode this week. So I'm excited to talk about that later on, but yeah, it's just madness. It is madness. So where do we want to start here? Let's, let's start with it's, it's not really star Wars news, but it impacts star Wars. It is. We'll call it star Wars adjacent. How's that? Star Wars adjacent. Uh, Bob Iger steps down as Disney's CEO. Yeah. Um, yeah. Surprise <laughs> announcement too. Like no, it, no one it was, saw it coming. It was boom. It hit. And oh yeah, by the way, effective immediately. So that was like, wow. Um, I guess there's no one better to tell us about it than uh, the man himself. Right. Yeah. So as we looked at the businesses, we felt we have a great set of assets, we have a great strategy. What's next? And what was next in terms of my own priorities is making sure that the creative pipeline of the company was really rich, that all of our creative engines were uh, working extremely well, and I wanted to spend more and more of my time on that. But the only way that I was able to do that was to give up the day-to-day running of the company to pass the torch on to Bob so that my direct reports and the authority over our businesses will shift to him, freeing me up to do what I think is our next big priority. So the Bob he's talking about is Bob Chapek, who's been running uh, Disney parks and entertainment, I think. And um, that I kinda, see what they're doing there. What's that? So when it says uh, this one's coming down from Bob's desk. Yeah. <laughs> They're not lying. Yeah, Bob who? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, well, he says, you know, you know, in this interview, there was more to it, but that's the gist of it right there. Uh, he said he's he's going to have one person to report to, and that's Bob Chapek. You know, it's like, and he's stepping down into uh, executive, what, executive chair or whatever for a creative not sure how these titles work, but I don't know. I, I'm I'm just I'm just kind of blown away and flabbergasted here a little bit. It's it's Bob Iger wants to focus more on creative. I'm <laughs> I guess that's got me a little, uh, you know, kind of saying, huh? Well, I mean, so whenever you're talking about uh, creative and and art and things like that, and you're talking about the top brass being involved, uh huh. Um, just because he steps down doesn't mean he loses that top brass mentality. Right. And I don't know, man, uh, the heads of, of, of plenty of creative departments have stepped in and ruined 
lots of good things, Agreed. you know, throughout history. Yeah. And I don't know if, <laughs> if someone of that mindset, like stepping in and getting more involved in creative is that good of an idea. Exactly. It sounds like a horrible idea. I, I, I hope this isn't what this means that, that he's going to have more of a hands-on role with, you know, making ultimate decisions on, on story and stuff like that, because, wow, I, I don't know if that's the path we want to go down. <laughs> that's that, that sounds like a recipe for disaster to me, but you know, the, the guy's, the guy's been doing what he does for a long time. He's good at it. And, and it's more of a administrative technical type position. I guess you could call it not creative, not artsy. <laughs> yeah. You know, right, yeah. right. He, he's the one that's going to be telling, you know, that the creative stuff will come across his desk and he'll go, no, no, do something else. Right. And, and, <sighs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't like that. Like, I don't know. I, I know that that's what happens in these businesses all the time. But when you have someone who was in that mindset of being a CEO, of being the head honcho, stepping in to be more hands on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, and more hands on probably in the middle of the process instead of at the end. Whereas at the end you can make, you know, changes and, and we'll talk about this, uh, as we go forward, like you can make changes later on in, in the beginning, but how many times is this going to, this stuff going to go into development and go, you know what? No, we don't like where this is going. Let's start over. Exactly. Let's, let's push our timetable out another year. Let's, let's, let's completely change this. I gotta say. This kind of thing has been going on in Star Wars ever since the Disney acquisition. We've seen it over and over. How many directors have we seen get fired? Directors, mm -hmm. writers, and and you know, uh, movie sets that are a fiasco. Think you know, you know. I just I'm scared it's, it's, that it's going to be more of the same. But but that's more the corporate mentality being involved, right? That's what I'm afraid of. You know, like like the artist making what the artist wants to make, and this this is while it was different for George Lucas because he was the creative that became the head honcho. So for him to remain the creative person wasn't a stretch. It's not like he was a CEO and decided, okay, now I'm going to, you know, be more hands-on with making this film. No, he was the guy who made the film from the start. So he was the artist. Exactly. Artist turned CEO, you know? Yeah. The, the <laughs> thing about George that he was really good at was surrounding himself with excellent people that they knew their end of the craft better than anyone else right he uh you know the buck stopped with him ultimately mm -hmm. but uh he knew these people that he would bring in for whatever whatever it may be you know i'm thinking ilm and things like that uh he you know, these were the best. These people were the best and, and they were allowed the freedoms to do what they thought was best. And then he made the ultimate decisions, but he was a creative at heart. Right. So his decision wasn't like, no, no, it, it wasn't. No, no, that's not going to sell. Exactly. This it was, is, no, no, that's not going to move the story in the right direction. Exactly. That's not going to help tell the story I want to tell. Right. Exactly. Like, like he wasn't going, no, no, you're writing this too much for the old star Wars fan. Not thinking about, we want a broader audience, you yeah. know, that, while that's important and you want a broader audience, 
that can't be your focus in creating it. Exactly. And your focus in creating it shouldn't it also shouldn't be, oh, we got to make sure we appease the old Star Wars fans. George didn't give a damn about that. No, no prequels anyone i mean yeah i mean he (laughs) didn't care about pleasing the old fan he didn't care about you know pleasing a new fan the the ironic part of that is that ultimately he did because most original trilogy fans ended up in the end liking the prequels yes but he didn't do that for doing that sake exactly he did not sit down and go oh no i shouldn't do that because this portion of fandom isn't going to like it he didn't do that. He he was like, no, the story should go here. That's, uh, and and I can't do this right here because it won't line up with this portion of the story. It, it, it's a story decision, not a fandom decision. Exactly. He he has always said, I told the stories I wanted to tell. Period. That must be respected. Yeah. So that's what. <laughs> that's what. Uh, artists do (laughs) yeah yeah you know when a painter sits down to paint something they don't go you know i wonder what this portion of the art community would think if i did this (laughs) yeah no they go this is what i'm feeling this is what's in my head this is what i'm putting on a canvas yep and hell sometimes they don't even they don't even go that far they just start doing it exactly you know Art is art. I mean, you're a musician. Yep. How many how many songs did you guys come up with just jamming? Just doing whatever came to you. Just whatever comes to you is how it happens most times. Yeah, you just start this little, like, diddle session. <laughs> yeah. And something comes out of it. Exactly. You play something, and you're like, whoa. Yep. Play that guys, again. Yep. Let's do that again. And there's always the 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 bass player or something's like, do what again? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's <laughs> you're funny. But uh what? <laughs> that's that's the quote unquote magic of creating something in an artistic manner. So I don't know. Hopefully, hopefully this isn't what you know, creative executive means. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I, I I have some thoughts coming up that you know, I'm I'm, I don't know, I'm cringing about. But uh, uh, hopefully, it's it's something a little different. I don't know what it would be, but I'm Did just. Do you have hoping... another Bob clip or? I do, do we... actually. Yes. Um. And it's, 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 you know, I guess, I guess maybe, maybe we don't have to worry about this for so long, but (laughs) Bob, as you focus on the storytelling and less on the day to day, um, do you imagine potentially extending your time at the Walt Disney company beyond December, 2021? No, I don't No. So I've been to the company 45 (laughs) years and I was in the CEO job for 15 of those years. I was president and COO for five. It's a it's it's been a fun run, and I'm looking I'm looking forward to the run ending. But I've got I still have a job to do. So, uh, two no, things, you don't. <laughs> two things about <laughs> this is is he's playing. You know he's got a hard hard end date. He's hard stop, full stop. He's out December thirty first, twenty twenty one. So, I okay. Um. The other part, though, is that the uh, the uh, interviewer there says uh, you're going to focus more on storytelling. That's where. Uh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so my thing is this: Bob Iger. I mean, to his credit, he did great things for the business side of Disney. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but in recent times, I feel like he's been diving more and more into it, and and we're seeing more and more struggles. Um not just with star Wars, with, with other things as well, with, with delays and things like that. It, it just, I feel like there's too much, um, what's the word? Um, bureaucracy going yeah. on with the art meddling from the top. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, it's it's just I don't know. I I could be off base. It it, it could be real problems. But I've just noticed of late that there are more and more let's go back to the drawing board moments. And I don't know that that that's going to get you the best possible products all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It works here and there. But if you're doing that with everything, which it seems it has been done with everything. Yeah. It, it just, I don't know. Well, I I think this takes us into the next story of uh, someone quitting. Cause, cause I think these tie in together really well. Yes, I think this this flows together. So Steven Steel, Steel, <laughs> Steven Spielberg. I know this guy's name. He's famous. Yes, he is. <laughs> is stepping down from the fifth Indiana Jones film. Why? <sighs> <laughs> you you have to ask the question. I mean, the Indiana Jones movies. That's a Spielberg thing, man. Now, now let's let's preface this by saying that that Variety is saying, according to sources, that Steven Spielberg is stepping down. So this is not confirmed. There is no official announcement. This is, you know, Variety getting rumblings from behind the scenes, which Variety is usually pretty on. They're yeah, they They're, are one of the sources that uh, Disney and Lucasfilm kind of tend to go to for releasing this kind of thing i i, I understand yeah. this isn't an official announcement but you know uh, um if their sources are saying it though their sources are are typically pretty good sources right. so they they have a real finger on the pulse of everything going on behind the scenes especially with disney and lucasfilm and and, and things like that yep because they have such a tight relationship so yep so I'm going to go right to it, Joe. <laughs> yep. In this article, the one thing that really bothers me is uh, the part where they talk about, uh, well, where they, <laughs> what, what Harrison Ford has to say. So this paragraph is Harrison Ford, meanwhile, is still on the project. The actor recently made headlines speaking about the future of the franchise while promoting his latest film, The Call of the Wild. He told CBS Sunday morning this month that he was, quote, going to start doing Indiana Jones in about two months, unquote. And then, days later, he told, hey, you guys, that the project is still facing, quote, scheduling issues and a few script things, unquote. And that, quote, we are determined to get it right before we get it made <laughs> so there we go script things S script things so we've got indy 5 yeah cassian yeah. obi-wan yeah rogue one was rewritten yeah um <laughs> solo went through tons of pains and and uh trevorrow yeah, I mean, I, Rise I, of Skywalker. I mean, this 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 is a thing now. This is this is definitely a thing within this company, and and everyone's and been see, asking the, the creative process. I mean, you, you look at what happened with Marvel. They got Kevin Feige, and Kevin Feige set the course. Yes. Okay, and and he he got it done. Yes. This to me, a Bob Iger isn't the person you need to set the creative course with the things that are going on right now. No, you need someone like a Kevin Feige, which he is being brought into Star Wars, right? And yeah. and and who knows? Maybe maybe he has a hand in some of this. I doubt it. Um, I think he was brought in for one project and one project alone, and I think that's going to be tied to Ryan Johnson. It's a good possibility. Um, we'll, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, they, they, they need a, a Kevin Feige type figure. They don't need a, a Bob Iger moving out of CEO to come down here and do more of this crap. And, and, and that's my opinion, not yours. Exactly. <laughs> you know, I, that's, I, I think, you know, everyone's been calling for years now for Dave Filoni 
to fill George's shoes, to be the buck stops here about story guy, right? And it, it doesn't have to necessarily be Filoni, but it would have to be somebody willing to take on that they kind of need role. A singular vision. Yeah. We saw this with the sequel trilogy. You see, you watch The Force Awakens, then The Last Jedi, then The Rise of Skywalker, and there is not a singular vision there. Whether or not the stories gel and things like that's another conversation. Yep. Because I think they really do in a sense. Yes. There but are, there are things that do and things that don't, but there are but, some definite direction issues there. Yes. Um, and, and it's part of the reason why the rise of Skywalker felt so cluttered. Yes. Because you felt like you had to hit on all this before you end it. You needed a singular vision from the start to make all this cohesive. So you had no disruptions. This was your start point. This was your finish point for three films. Yep. Not, okay, you do your thing. Okay, the ne- next guy comes in and does his thing. And then you bring the first guy back and continue the thing he started before, but the thing in the middle is c- completely different. It's, it's just, <laughs> you can't do that. You bring the first guy back after you got rid of the guy that was going to do the last thing. So, yeah, yeah I mean, that's, that's, that's the problem. That's, there... <sighs> There seems to be no focus. I mean, there is it's, there is a singular success here, story wise, in my opinion, and that is Rogue One. Rogue One is the one out of this pile that completely gets redone and works out. Absolutely, like well, like works out the best. I I don't have a problem with the other films. No, no, but okay. you're right. You're absolutely right that. They, and that's why I said this, this works from time to time, but this can't be your thing. Exactly. I, I, I just worry for this franchise that we so love that it's headed down a dark path. <laughs> I mean, I just think that, uh, <sighs> You have to have that one singular vision. I, you know, I, we've all seen the 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 crime shows, right? Where they got the the one suspect in the middle of the the cork board on the wall, and all the the red yarn leading to this clue and that clue, and the you know, it's almost like you have to have that one person staring at that board. How does all this tie together? How's it all work? And it's 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 got to come from a singular mind. And and I I just don't think we have that. And, we don't and, have time to discuss this with the committee. Yeah, right. <laughs> I am not a committee. Um, <laughs> uh, and 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 initially, I think we all thought that that was going to be Kathleen Kennedy. Yeah, which I was cool with, but it just doesn't seem like that's worked out. So. I don't no, know I, because it's 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 being run by committee. It's absolutely being run and, by committee. And I understand wanting to have different voices and, and and different feels and things like that. But you 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 and you can have that. That's why you have different writers. This, this is why George had different writers. Absolutely, George okay. would listen to everybody's ideas and go, "That wouldn't happen in Star Wars." I like that. Let's run with that. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, th- but I don't think he micromanaged it that much. You know, like it, he had, Oh no, this is the point where we have to get, okay, guys, this is, this is our target. Yes. And if you're doing something that doesn't line up with that target, then we have to scrap that. Exactly. He's- but you have to meet this target. How you get there is up to you. You're the writer. Yes. But you got to get to this target. Yep. Uh, and th- and that's what they need. They need that one. You don't need a like singular, you know, storytelling method or singular this or that. You just need a singular vision. This right. is your end point. And this is the person that says, no, okay, this, this is not lining up with your end point. You're not, you're, you're, you're going too far off into left field. You, you need to center out. 
keep moving forward. Yep. I think I think we could also run or we have been running into a little bit. Uh Star Wars as big as it is, as loved as it is, as as much as so many people hold it dear, there are those creators who want to be a part of it to quote unquote leave their mark on it. Yes. And it's more about me, that than it is about Star Wars. Let me let me use the sequel trilogy as an example, okay? Please do. If you have a singular vision with an end goal, okay? Yep. Let's take those who complain about The Force Awakens, saying The Force Awakens rehashes too much on A New Hope. Uh Uh-huh. Okay, well, your singular vision saying, okay, this is the end point, is going to tell you, look, we've done this. We don't need to do that again. Okay? That's done. You don't need to go back. We need to go forward. Yeah. Okay? Then you have the complaints about The Last Jedi going too far off in the left field, you know, just, just kind of stepping away from the groundwork that was laid. Yep. You have a singular vision saying, look we can't go over here because it's, it's steering away from this end goal. Yeah. So they bring it that back. And then you have the people who are complaining about the rise of Skywalker going back again, rehashing on old stuff, you know, doing the same thing over again. Once mm-hmm. again, you have someone saying, look, this is the end goal. You're not getting there by talking about a new hope or return of the Jedi. Yeah. We need to be talking about the rise of Skywalker, not the last Je- or not return of the Jedi. Right. You know, we need to be talking about the last Jedi, not return of the Jedi. You need to be talking about the force awakens, not a new hope, you know, just, we need to go forward. Absolutely. And this is the target and we got to get there before, before the last chapter, you know, we got to, we got to be heading there before the last chapter. Yeah. I, I guess my thing is, um, I don't necessarily think Bob's the guy for that role. And I'm hoping that's not what he's intending on being. Cause, uh, it just appears to me between all these star Wars movies, what's going on with Indiana Jones here. What? I, here's what I'm asking myself about Indiana Jones. What could have possibly happened and I think we're getting a little clue from this statement by uh, Harrison Ford. Uh, what could possibly make Steven Spielberg, of all people, step down from a director's role in an in indie movie? I, 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 I mean, he didn't just, feel like he was making an indie movie? There you go. You know, I mean, let's, let's, let's bring it around to this. What could make two directors leave to go do a Netflix deal? Yeah. You're leaving star yeah, Wars. Exactly. Exactly. Netflix. Exactly. What environment are you creating? I mean, take whatever you have against Benioff and Weiss because of game of Thrones or whatever else they've done and put that aside for a second. And just think about that. What is going on that they decide to go to Netflix? I have an idea of what was going on. And I think this could take us right into our next story, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> segways. I like segways. Uh-huh. I got a feeling that the, maybe those two didn't want to have a seat at that uh, that big table. Talking about the High Republic. Oh, really? You think? Oh, I... I have my suspicions. All right. So we'll go into it now. I'll, I'll say why I disagree with that uh, before we get into it. Project luminous is very much a publishing project. Uh Uh-huh. Everything I've seen so far. I mean, that's not saying that this (laughs) stuff can't spin off into movies. They do say that they're laying the groundwork for the future or whatever, but there's no inclination right now that this is headed towards film. You're absolutely correct. What I'm saying here 
is pure speculation. Okay. So before we go into that, we're, we're going to go ahead and talk about what this is project luminous. Yep. We've, we've talked about project luminous before. I think it was brought up at celebration. It goes back that far. Yeah. Um, and, uh, Project Loomis, they, they, they made an announcement this past week, and it is now officially named Star Wars The High Republic. Yep. Okay. Cool. So uh, I got a little excerpt here that kind of describes what this is. So Star Wars The High Republic is an era. This is from the official release from uh, Star Wars. Okay. Yep. Star Wars The High Republic is set in an era when the Galactic Republic and the Jedi Order are at their height, serving and protecting the galaxy. This is a hopeful, optimistic time when the Republic and the Jedi are noble and respected. This multi-year publishing program will be rolled out in phases, with phase one being called Light of the Jedi. This period on the Star Wars timeline will not overlap any of the films or series currently planned for production giving creators and partners space to tell Star Wars stories in a never-before-explored timeline. Okay. Okay. Cool. And there are a series of titles that are, are, are already announced. Mm-hmm. Um, so we got uh, Star Wars The High Republic Into the Dark by Claudia Gray. Yep. Uh, Test of Courage by Justina Ireland. And all these have the Star Wars The High Republic moniker before it. Right. Uh, yeah, Star Wars: The High Republic Adventures. Um, one called just Star Wars: The High Republic, and Star Wars: The High Republic: Light of the Jedi. Okay, cool. Now these are these. This is a combination of of novels and young adult novels and things like that. Correct. Novels, young adult novels, comic books. Um, they've got a list of publishers here, and and some publishers I'm not even familiar with. Yeah. I saw uh, that so too. we got, here's the list of publishers, Abrams, Becker and Mayer, DK insight editions, Titan publishing, Viz media. And that's joining the, the heavy hitters of Marvel comics, Del Rey and IDW. Okay. So of everything you just said there, nothing sounds horrible. No. Um, I, I, I'm sure we've all seen the video released by star Wars and star Wars.com. And, uh, it's, it's some of that, that I will say bothers me a little bit again, (laughs) (laughs) because again, I think it's quite clear that what we're going to be getting is Star Wars by committee again. So that's my, again, I'm sure I'm going to read these. I'm going to enjoy them, but I might feel like there's a little bit of a watered down edge to them because of this. I, I, I just think there's not so much of a singular well, I mean, let's let's take for example when when Star Wars publishing under the Disney umbrella started. Okay, the novels were, um, in my opinion, fantastic. Uh huh. the The first run of books out of the gate, starting with uh, A New Dawn. Yeah, A New Dawn was great. Yeah, but yeah, these books were fantastic. You know, yeah. A New Dawn, Tarkin, um. Uh, uh, Dark Disciple, Lords of the Sith. Yes. These books were fantastic. And all kind of carried the same feel. You know, there was, there was, it's, it felt like we were in the same universe all the time. Absolutely. And then, uh, if, if you enjoyed these, uh, uh, forgive me, I, I didn't, but then we got to aftermath. Yeah. Those, those were not the high point in star Wars publishing. I mean, aftermath, like you talk about the rise of Skywalker and how fast it was 
and and how how it jumped around and things like that. It's like you took that and put it directly on paper. Yeah. Yeah. And exactly. didn't expand on everything you did. If yes. If you had a problem with the uh uh the rise of Skywalker for for that reason, yeah, those books must have driven you crazy. <laughs> yeah, because I I mean, the rise of Skywalker to me felt a little bit like that. Like 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 the aftermath books kind of here 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 yeah um a little more focused um you didn't end up talking about the past as much and things like that was the thing in the aftermath books like you're you're in current timeline right now talking about you know uh Luke Skywalker, just an example, right? Or this new uh, officer, things like that. And then you're talking about Han Solo like 10 years before. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And they would call, I think, what, what, what do they call them? Um, the interludes, I think. Something yeah. like that. And it was like, well, that was just kind of random and out there. And then you're back to the other story. It's uh, That was weird. Yes. So You know, like one saying I, I, I don't like is like, oh, that was the moment it took me out of it. Yeah. I mean, this is literally taking you out of what you're doing. Exactly. And 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 to me, those interludes and things like that were a complete non sequitur. They had nothing to do with what you were just reading about. Exactly. That's exactly and then right. after after you got done reading it, where you picked up had nothing to do with what you just read. <laughs> yeah. So it's like it's not why? Like, it's not like a secondary thread that's gonna tie in at the end somehow, because it never did. That was the it problem. It never did. That was the problem. So that's my problem with stuff like that. And I just, I don't want to see more of that. <laughs> exactly. So in that respect, I can understand getting authors together to get their, you know, make sure they're all on the same page of where they're going with story and stuff like outlines and whatnot. Okay, cool. As uh, long as that's what they're doing here. Yeah, so some of that seems kind of like that, right? They talk about um, this is going to take place 200 years prior to the events of the prequels. And they talk about the Jedi as being this uh, what, what Knights of the Round Table sort of thing, which, okay, I guess the Jedi Council is kind of set up like that, but no table. I get, okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, you know, they talk about a common enemy, right? The Nile, mm -hmm. um, which is going to be, I guess, uh, some sort of what they call them, not like bounty hunters, but but like like uh, pirates, pirates, yeah. So okay, so you you got to have some sort of conflict, and and. And you can't have the Sith. Right. Because the Sith have been. Extinct for about 800 years at this point. You don't want to say extinct, but they've been in, in the shadows, in the background. Okay. They've been thought to be extinct. Yes. So, uh, I will say I do like. They're they're They kept, they, they said they, they're asking themselves two questions throughout this whole thing okay and one was what was obi-wan's statement all about to luke right the statement of for a thousand generations the jedi knights have been uh protectors of peace throughout the galaxy right yep so what what is that all about okay cool i like that then my other question is why are you only going 200 years back <laughs> so I, I i feel like there's so much more fertile ground further back in time that they could have hit on so i i i fear that they're only going a couple hundred years back so that they can do something like insert yoda or something like that but yes we'll see um Oh, I think I, I don't know if that's sketch work was, uh, pertinent to what they're working on, but there was definitely a Yoda sketch on there. Oh, nice. Um, speaking of the sketch work, 
you know, they did have the benefit of bringing Star Wars artist Ian McKay in, who did a lot of cool artwork for them as they were going through all their, their, uh, what would you call, what would you call those, uh, a pitch session, session or brainstorming session, you know? Yep. That's kind of cool. But, uh, so the other question they were, are constantly asking themselves is what scares a Jedi? Uh, so, um, nothing. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Because what makes a Jedi? What is, what does Yoda talk about? And, and when he's teaching Luke about the force, when you're calm, when you are at peace, it's like, yeah. Fear leads to what? Huh. Anger. Yeah. Anger leads to what? Hate. Yep. And there's something about suffering and And I I I doubt this is a lesson the Jedi had learned two hundred years before. Exactly. If they were if for a thousand generations they were the guardians of peace and justice, I doubt it was only two hundred years ago that they were like, Oh wow, we've been doing this all wrong. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So I I you know in his teachings, you know, he says, you know, let go of everything you fear to lose. Learn to let go. Yeah. So if you and that that includes your own life. Yeah, whatever it takes, yeah. A, a Jedi would not be afraid to die. Exactly. Because being afraid to die would be, you know, he, he went on to talk about greed and things like that. That would be, you know, a shadow of greed. Yeah. So you can't fear that loss. You know, rejoice for those who turn into the, you know, transform into the force. Yes. Now, there are those who would say, you know, the teachings of Yoda aren't so great. Ha <laughs> ha hunter but um <laughs> <laughs> I, there are Twice some nuggets three weeks there are some nuggets in there you know what i'm saying it's uh I, I, it's it's what's been laid out before us but and just real quick on that th this is not yoda's idea okay correct true yoda did not come up with this at, at 900 years old true you know, a thousand generations is more than a thousand years yeah we're talking like two thousand 2,500, something like that. Yeah. That's what More I would say. I would think, right? Oh, well, a generation is what? I'm figuring 20 years ish. Yeah. So it would be 20,000. Oh, there you go. <laughs> 25,000. Yeah. I, I should math better. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes, that's, that's, that's one thing that concerns me about only going back a couple hundred years is you want to make sure. You put the Yoda cameo in there in these books or whatever. And I'm just, I don't know. I'm hoping that it's not a little, ex, you know, exploitative or I don't know if that's a word, but, you know, just to exploit that. Right. I mean, who knows? Maybe I'm way off base with that, but I would think there's, a lot more fer fertile ground further back in time. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, you asked that question, what, what does a Jedi fear? What scares a Jedi? I didn't ask it. That's what, no, I'm just saying, let's, let's just say that. Uh, the answer should be for a Jedi. Nothing, nothing. Exactly. Um, you're going to have Jedi that fail in this. Yeah. Oh, sure. Sure. And there's, You'll get no argument out of me. You know, there are plenty of examples in just the limited timeline that we've had uh, of that happening. Yeah. So I just, yeah. There should be no overarching fear for Jedi. Fear for select Jedi, sure. And that should not be uniform. Exactly. Yeah, what scares... 
<laughs> what scares Jedi, a Jedi or the Jedi? That's a big difference in that question. What scares a Jedi or what scares the Jedi? Right. Yeah. So real quick, I would like to touch real quick on, uh, they had this, this shot of this whiteboard in this tra- trailer. Um, yep. And you had a different take on this whiteboard than what I've heard a lot of people saying online about uh, the direction they think things are going with Star Wars from this whiteboard. And I, yes. I got to say, I kind of liked your take. I, I, I feel like it's kind of a given. But I like your take better than most people's take, to be honest. So, I don't know. You want to lay that on us? Okay, so are we talking about the middle portion of this whiteboard? Um, I was talking about it as a whole, but... As a whole, okay. So, the left portion of the whiteboard, I don't necessarily understand. Okay. Um, I have thoughts on it, but it's... It, I don't really... I don't really understand what they're going there. I'm not in the room, right? True. I think the other ones for me are obvious. Okay. And uh, a lot of people are saying, you know, duh, Star Wars is not pro-war. Hey, I said that. You know, <laughs> and, and, and you're not the only person I've heard say this. Correct. Um, And I think that this middle portion, this is Star Wars. What th- They ask the question, what is Star Wars? Okay. And you, you throw out the obvious. Okay, when you're doing this, I, I, I've, I've in my profession done a lot of outlining and things like that. And you a lot of times do put down the obvious because you need to have something up there to keep you grounded, to make sure you don't venture away from that. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and it doesn't matter how stupid you think it is. You, you put it up there. Okay. Right. So the middle is what is star Wars and, and star Wars is not pro war. There's droids. There's scope, right? It's mythic. You know, there's space and lightsaber battles. There's not a singular character, a main character, you know, it, it's, there's always a group of characters that you're kind of following around. It's, it's while you could venture to say that Luke is a main character. Yes, he is a main character, is he the main character? Well, yeah. I would say no. I would say if you had to pin a main character in Star Wars, it would probably be Anakin above anybody because he's sure. the, the constant threat. Sure. You but, think back to the OT, though, we always talk about the big three, the the core trio. Right. So, And that's that's something they tried to echo in the um, the sequel. Sequel trilogy. Yep. yep sequel sure. trilogy. And, yep. and, and you almost kind of had in the prequel trilogy. Yep. They didn't really work together so much, uh, all together at the same time, but they were there. I would say your, your, your core trio in that was Obi-Wan, Anakin, and Padme. Absolutely. So while they didn't go on adventures together, you know, they, they were your core group. I yes, think. I agree. I mean, they had their, their moment on Geonosis. That's about it. Yeah. <laughs> together. So. I, I, as you're reading down this list, I, I was looking at that, that center column of this whiteboard and it says star Wars and it's got a heart. Yep. So what do we love? What do we love about star Wars? If you ask, if that's what the question you're asking and you go down that, that makes so much more sense to me than, than, you know, what your initial thoughts might be from this whiteboard because just at a glance I, and I, I gotta say i'm guilty of this okay at a glance you look at it and say it's not pro-war it's like wars in the name of the thing you're doing you know so right <laughs> but but to look at it like that okay what do we love about star wars it's not pro-war and you're right star wars is not pro-war it's actually very anti-war if you yes really get into it yes you know, war doesn't benefit the little buddy. Yeah. Well, yeah. It profits some, which you know, we learned in, uh, the last Jedi, right? <laughs> yeah, man. Live free. Don't join. Yeah. We got smacked in the face with that, but, uh, 
okay. That's so, actually one of my favorite moments in, in oh, that whole film. I, I, I agree. When he you. clicks through, is like, oh, this guy made his riches selling weapons to the bad guys. Yep. And the good. And the good. Yep. <laughs> totally. So. so, um, I I have to say the first column I am a little confused by as well. It says fiction on top. That's the title of that column. Uh, every you know everything it says in that column, authentically lived in, surprise, diversity, actual ending. I. I I'm assuming I, I I think everyone's assuming that means there's going to be an end to this story, this this High Republic right. story, uh, feelings, relatable characters, and sweeping and epic. It's kind of like a a very broad umbrella of over an overall feel of Star Wars, I guess. I you know, but right, it's very vague. So. I'm not exactly sure, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I For me, I guess that's all kind of like given stuff, you know, like like it's just assumed it should be anyway. So, I don't know. Now, one take I will make, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll put it out there, is like you look at the wishes side. Like this is, what do you wish for Star Wars? Yes. And the first one is High Republic. It's like, oh, wow egotistical much like <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> uh-huh um i would say if you're gonna put something up there star wars wishes what do people want um i think that should be that high should be crossed out and and rewritten as old yeah um because that is something a lot well whose wishes are they that's what you gotta, i know because i've ask. never heard anyone say man i really want to hear about the high republic yeah i looked at him and said what the hell is the high republic <laughs> exactly so, but someone says to me, man, I really wish they'd do some old Republic stuff. It's like, yeah, Revan. Yeah, let's do it up. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so. There's been a lot of that talk lately, for sure. Yeah. But, I mean, a lot of this other stuff, I, I get. Yeah. Uh, some of it I don't understand. Like, rival houses? What, what are you talking about? Romeo and Juliet, man. What are you? Oh, wait. I'm thinking maybe Skywalkers and Palpatines. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe this is somebody's kind of idea for yeah Romeo and Juliet kind of thing. Okay, yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah, I could see a story like that being weaved in. I, I could dig that. Okay, okay. Um, I, I was, I'm not sure that. I'm not sure that I want it so on the nose. Oh no! Hopefully, no, I mean it's just got to have that flair. Yeah. Okay. Um. I'm just saying that that kind of concept. Yeah. I can see that kind of concept being used. Okay. Um, Relic Hunters, sure. Neat. Yeah. That sounds like interesting story. University, I have no idea what the hell they're talking about. Uh, school, I guess. School? I mean, everyone bitched about politics. Now we're going to do school. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I like where you're at with this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just... Um, What's that? Is that Arthurian Legends? Oh, is that Arthurian? what that is? Is that what that is? I bet you're right. Yeah, so a Knights of the Round Table kind okay. of deal. Because I was thinking it said Aquarium Legends. No, I think it says Ar- <laughs> Arthurian. I was thinking Moncala. I don't King know. King Arthur, uh, <laughs> uh, Camelot type stuff. Okay, that makes more sense than what I was we thinking. We are the Knights that say P. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, love it. Neat. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that that went off the deep end for a second. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sith Empire. I uh, can't do it in High Republic, but definitely something we'd like to see. No, no, it would be okay. I, <laughs> it would have to be done right. Okay, and this kind of goes against what we were talking about with uh, aftermath. But if there was some sort of a little side story. Something that didn't play too far into their main story that kind of told us what was going on with the the two Sith that existed at the time. Yes, and, but that can't be the Sith Empire. You know, right. the, the oh, Sith Empire of the Legends material was... You're you know, right. The, you're right. 
thousands to sit throughout the galaxy. I'm totally on board with what you're saying right there. Yes. You could be telling two stories at the same time. Yes. Like they are over here sowing chaos and that, and that would tie into that chaos agents on there. Yes. You know, they could be sowing chaos. Yes. But never revealing themselves. Right. Like two parallel stories going on con- yeah, concurrently. Th- th- while I say that the, you, you can't really have Sith, I, I, I don't mean it like that. You can't have Sith interacting with Jedi. Exactly. Directly. Jedi. You can't have a red lightsaber and a, a green lightsaber crossing. Right. Uh, the Jedi have to be oblivious to anything that the Sith have going on. Yeah. And a splinter group of Force users? Hmm? A splinter group of Force users? Splinter group? That's what it says on there. I did not see that. Yeah. Splinter group of Force users. So, like, uh... By splinter group, I'm I'm assuming they mean like a gray, gray or just untrained. Um, maybe maybe dark side acolytes that aren't Sith, or or even people like a society, maybe or or just people somewhere who are in touch with the Force, but haven't undergone quote unquote Jedi training. Right. You know, so maybe they just do things a little differently. Could be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. There's, I mean, there's a lot of good stuff on here. What about the one in that column? Oh, dinosaurs. Yes. I don't care. Where are we going with this? (laughs) I mean, if you have a Tyrannosaurus Rex, I'm going to be pissed off. I'll be like, what? Yeah, exactly. But I mean, if you have dinosaur like creatures on a, on a, a, on some world you go to and the world is populated with them, you know, very little, uh, human or other alien populations. I could dig it. Yeah. So. Well, hopefully it's going to be good. I, you know, I, what do we always say here, right? I'm going to hope for the best with this. Um, I'm going to be a little skeptical for now because again, this, you know, I saw it with my own eyes from their trailer, the star Wars by committee brainstorming sessions going on. So I'm a little on the skeptic side. But let's see how these stories play out and, you know, time will tell and we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right. So one more thing that kind of threads off of everything we've talked about here. So the Hollywood Reporter reported that J.D. Dillard and writer Matt Owens are to develop a new Star Wars project. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Everyone's assuming that this is the project that was abandoned by Benioff and Weiss. Okay. But then again, it's it's like, well, is that being relegated to a Disney Plus series? That's that's I think always in the conversation now, right? Like, uh, is this film or is it Disney Plus? Well, I I kind of think it's it's right to be, you know, that conversation is right to be going on right now because I I have a feeling that. You know, streaming services are kind. You know, it's 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 the wild west of the streaming services going on right now. Basically, right. Everybody and their brothers coming out with a streaming service. They are all competing for your monthly subscription dollars, and I feel like the movie going public is starting to lean a little bit towards. Yeah, I'll go check it out at the movies. 
once, twice, eh, not going to go see it six times like I used to. Right. That's kind of what I'm thinking. So I think that conversation's legit. But. Man, you know, I, I think I should fix this this title real quick. Okay. So it, it should say director J.D. Dillard and writer Matt Owens and writer yet to be announced to replace Matt Owens. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes. And some director will bring in later on to fix. <laughs> yeah. I, I like mean, that. that's like, that, that, like, that's where we're at. Well, I, I, I really hope that this duo gets to make something to completion. I really do. Yes. Because that would be something we haven't seen in a minute. Yeah. Well, I think we, I think we, uh, uh, we showed quite a few examples earlier of what we were talking about. And right you now, I think your, your comment there is well warranted. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, seems like a good duo. Um, I, I just, like I said, I really hope we get to see what they're, what they're working on. Yeah. Because, yeah, <laughs> I can't get excited about a, a a director and a writer anymore because I just don't know if they're going to be there in two months. Exactly. It's true. All right. So one last thing. <laughs> and this is a fun one. Yes, yes it is. Giancarlo Esposito. Uh-huh. Um the 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 future unemployed Giancarlo Esposito. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. If nothing else, I'm sure he's gotten lots of emails, maybe a few phone calls. Uh Hey, shut up. <laughs> uh, he he was uh, speaking at a panel at uh, a Fan Expo Vancouver, and um, he had some things to say uh, about The Mandalorian Season 2. He was dropping some bombs on us here a little bit, so uh, let's just check out what he has to say here. I, I've got, I have been able to get my hands on the Baby Yoda, and I feel like we need to be able to physically, uh, I, I love to be able to touch the baby, um, oh my goodness, that baby's ears, when I mean, you just touch its ears, it's just so cool, it really feels real as well, so, uh, pretty amazing. Um, <laughs> okay. Okay, pretty harmless. So, he, <clears throat> basically... This is sounding to me like he's got some scenes with the baby Yoda. Which I think we expected. I th maybe. Yeah. Okay. So, but, yeah. In order for him to be really good, he's got to succeed for a minute. Okay. Okay. You know, to be to be a, a, a really successful villain, he's got to have a moment of success. So, I, I, I would assume he is going to get possession of the child okay for at least a short period of time i'll give you that all right so that to me is not the least bit surprising it gives him a minute to pet baby yoda, yoda behind the ear okay um <laughs> so he goes on to talk a little bit about the dark saber the big reveal we had at the end of season one so uh, <laughs> a little bit funny on this one but check it out it feels powerful, it feels wonderful. I broke three of them last week. <laughs> the, 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 the prop guys are wondering about me because I was in you know, a bit of a commotion and a bit of a struggle with someone else, and which I'm hoping you will enjoy when you see it. Major, major, epic, epic 
lightsaber action happening on this show, and I should mention that I'm the only character in this first season who was able to be honored with having that lightsaber. So it feels wonderful. Whoa. Yeah, whoa. Epic you lightsaber, lightsaber action? battle someone? Yeah. What's he talking about? Huh. I mean, in this time frame, who do we got that can battle with lightsabers? Um, Luke Skywalker. Yep. And hmm. Presumably Ahsoka Tano. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Uh, maybe an Ezra Bridger. Okay. I think um, that's our list. <laughs> yeah, we're we're done. Yeah. I, unless there's unless they're going to introduce another character, someone who's been laying low. But man, I hate I hate to see him keep doing that though. You know this this order 66 thing didn't turn out to be quite the success that we thought it was <laughs> right you know i i i just hope like uh, yeah we're gonna get to a point it's like yeah they got everyone except for 500 jedi exactly <laughs> uh, we'll see i i feel like if they would have banded together <laughs> yeah yeah they could, um, they could uh, probably take out Vader and Palpatine if they all got together on it. Yeah. Yep. But maybe, I don't know, maybe it's got something to do with something else. I have one more clip here. Uh, hey, you know who else can fight with a lightsaber? Who's that? Sabine Wren. Oh, yeah. Oh. Now that's a good thought. Because that would be awesome. She did have that in her possession at one point. That's an interesting thought. Ooh. I Ooh. mean, maybe after having the dark saber for a time, you know, maybe they find as maybe, maybe she ends up with a lightsaber somehow. Oh, wow. You know, she was hanging out with Ahsoka. She's got these skills. Yeah. Wouldn't be nothing for Ahsoka to help her build one. I vote Sabine Wren. Wow. I like it. I got to say. And that would I be like that awesome. One. Yes, it would. And, you know, it, this is a, a series about the Mandalorian. It would make sense that uh, it, it, he would have another Mandalorian, you know, at his aid at some point. Yeah. I mean, we've already seen that other Mandalorians yeah, helping him along the way. Absolutely. So why not bring in a major Mandalorian in the Star Wars timeline with, with Sabine Wren? Oh, I like it. I like it. And you pick someone who's going to be pissed about what happened on Mandalore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And if, and if, uh, Moff Gideon had much to do with that. Oh, I can see revenge being uh Oh yeah, her family main driver of Sabine, yeah. While she was away? Yeah. Ooh. And and like my problem with a Luke Skywalker or an Ahsoka Tano or even an Ezra Bridger, um Gideon should get his ass handed to him in those situations. Exactly. You're you're absolutely um, right. While I feel like Sabine would do the same. I don't think it would be as easily devastating. It would be a little more, you know, no force power being brought to the, the, like the Mandalorians had tons of ways to deal with force powers and maybe Gideon does too, having had to deal with Mandalorians, but Mandalorians were trained. I gotta say, man, in a, in some weird way, I kind of like this idea of two combatants going at each other with lightsabers that aren't force that, users. Yes, exactly. That's kind of a neat idea. 
and you can you can use someone who's believable in it because you've already seen her use a lightsaber. Yeah. Yeah, there's so, definitely precedent set for that. Yeah, because Ezra tossed her his. Yep. When fighting, um, what was his name? Oh, I can't remember. I can't remember either. That's where she but, gets him in the same position as Anakin had Dooku. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So I'm on board. It. I'm on board with that idea. But way to go, Giancarlo. We'll you we'll, just, we'll see. We got one more clip. Maybe this, you just blew the lid off of this thing. Maybe it's a, maybe it's something different. We'll have to wait and see here. Let's see if this sheds any light on it. Keep watching because although the baby has some incredible power without having to wield the dark saber, uh, I think the baby is so curious about what this is. Uh, so you will be enthused and inspired when you see the scene I'm referring to uh, in season two, which is to come in October. Keep watching. So now, okay, maybe he fights Baby Yoda. Maybe. <laughs> uh, what do you think that's all about? I mean, oh, I think. Oh, I, got, I think uh, his playful nature is going to get the dark saber in his hands at some absolutely. point. Absolutely, yeah. Baby Yoda is going to see that sucker, and he's just going to do a, a a force pull grab with it, pull it right to his hand, lights it up. Ooh, shiny. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> that I think is going to be funny. I don't think you're going to see an epic lightsaber battle between uh, Moff Gideon and <laughs> the child. On the other hand, if we did, oh my, I don't think we will either. But yeah. no, that 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 enters the level of ridiculous. That, <laughs> <laughs> that yeah. I don't think I don't think even with a a a, a TV series we're ready for. Yeah. Agreed. But nope, yeah, I, I'm still in the corner of Sabine Wren. I, I think so too. And uh, I am sure that by now, Giancarlo Esposito has had his cell phone blown up from uh, Disney Legal and uh, <laughs> Lucasfilm Lawyers and. Uh, and uh, uh, creative executive Bob Iger. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and uh, that's probably uh, the last we'll hear from him <laughs> until the the premiere of season two. So we'll see. I, I imagine that even the text message sounds like this. It, 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 the text message probably went like, eh, what are you doing, man? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's the matter with you? <laughs> Uh, may must i remind you on page 46 of your contract <laughs> someone just got their pay doc yeah <laughs> i don't know but i'll tell you what we are thankful because it added to the banter that's absolutely uh us star wars fans you know we we, we need stuff to talk about absolutely so, yeah, entertaining, and I'm looking forward to the next season of The Mandalorian and and uh, the introduction of Sabine Wren. Yeah, here's the hoping. <laughs> Have something to add to the conversation, or you just want to let us know how we're doing? Email us, show at thewarsandmore.com. That's the best place to get in on the action. But if social media is a little more to your liking... At The Wars and More on Twitter is always a good place to interact with us. And we're also on Facebook, facebook.com slash The Wars and More. And of course, your portal to this and everything else, The Wars and More, is thewarsandmore.com. All right. I think it's time that we end on a high note. I like that. The Clone Wars. <laughs> Dude. Yes. It, like we talked about last week, they come out swinging. They're still swinging. Oh, absolutely. I I was I, I was impressed here. I was just gonna say I was impressed with this episode, episode two, yeah. season seven. Awesome. Yeah, uh, I gotta say, I'm still blown away. This is the arc that I was like 
meh. Yeah. yeah like, sure. I'm sure it'll be good. Yeah. But it's not the one I'm really looking forward to. And it's got some staying power. This, this arc has a chance to be one of my favorite Clone Wars arcs altogether. Yeah. This is one of. There's there's a lot of good Clone Wars. Yeah, I was going to say, there's a lot of good Clone Wars for sure. But, but this is really good. Yep. I mean, you've got drama. You've got action. Awesome character building. We're getting more about Rex than we have maybe ever. Oh, yeah. Yeah, totally. I mean, just, just character moment-wise. We're not getting like... I mean, what's the backstory? He's a clone. Yeah. You know? But just the... The growth of his character, we're getting so much of that. Uh, Yeah, I think what we're seeing here is Rex, you know, with this, you know, finding this signal from Echo is is like, this is giving him pause for a moment to to actually think about, you know, what's been going on in, in his, some of his brothers that he's lost, right? So... Maybe up until this point, it's been all business, and he hasn't really had the time to reflect on it. But now, it's starting to affect him a little bit. So, yeah, I mean, he says as much. He's like, he says, I've lost so many brothers. Yeah. And I've never given it pause. But when I heard that signal, that's when it changed. Exactly. I was like, I was like, wow. (laughs) <laughs> this, is, this is this is deep yeah and, and and you see moments where he you know uh uh what is it crosshair you know he's he's kind of like uh <laughs> poking at him a little bit about leaving echo behind and stuff and he loses it a little bit so, yeah i mean well i mean he was kind of being a jackass about it agreed but you know rex I would like, I don't know, the way I remember Rex is he's kind of like the consummate professional, you know? So. Yeah, we've seen Rex get angry in the past, though. Sure. Yeah. Always kind of like mission first. Oh, yeah, definitely mission first. Um, And really doesn't give, you know, any thought to... Like he does give thought to, you know, his brothers and things like that. But if it's at the detriment of the mission, he will, he will leave a man behind. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's in their programming. Yes. This is not a no man left behind army here. Exactly. Everything. This is a win at all costs. (laughs) Right. (laughs) Army. So. Yeah, it, it's to see him, you know, kind of echoing the general he's served alongside, kind of getting Anakin's, you know, attachment to people. Oh, yeah. Because Anakin always cared about the clones, even though they're, you know, they're literally bred for war. Yeah. They're bred to be, ex- they're made to be expendable. Yes. But that never mattered to Anakin. Right. I think I think we saw in a in a big way Anakin over all of the seasons expounds on everything that Yoda says in the first episode of Ambush. You know, all the clones, you know, he in the force Yoda can see the differences in the clones. And mm-hmm. Anakin expresses that throughout all of the seasons. Yeah. So, so that was actually, I mean, I thought that was a special treat. I didn't really see as much Anakin involvement coming Oh, this early. I know. Neither did I. <laughs> I agree. Special treat. Uh, yeah. And, and, uh, I don't know. I don't know if we want to jump right to it but uh uh, why not anakin kind of has this uh 
apparently he's dragged Rex into this like uh, 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 secret that he's got where he's going off to call Padme and uh, Rex is covering for him. It's like, hmm, I guess they have a, a stronger bond than we realize. And Rex oh, kind of knows what's going on a little bit. So, yeah, but the problem is the guy that they're hiding it from. Yeah, he knows too. <laughs> he knows too. Yeah. That was beautiful. It was beautiful. I hope you told Padme I said hello. Yeah. Did, what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, that right there just makes some of the stuff that, you know, we see in episode three kind of like. Yeah, well, I guess Obi Wan did know all along, you know. So, we had talked about the visuals that were in this episode, uh, particularly with Padme. Oh, from the trailer. Yes. Yes. And how it it was very apparent that she was holding her belly there. Yes. And we were kind of speculating on where in the timeline this might be did anakin you know go away um was this after he knew um i think it's safe to say this is before anakin knows that padme is pregnant this is definitely before yes but i believe it's also safe to say padme knows already yes absolutely i i have to give credit here to the animators in this episode it's so subtle and they're not really bringing attention to it but it's so out there and up front for us to see is that without saying a word padme is conscious of you know what's going on inside her you know <laughs> yes and 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 she's she's making it known without making it known yeah um at least for the audience yeah absolutely um i don't think anakin in that you know like in that moment is going to be going hey why why you keep holding your stomach right exactly like like what the hell is this yeah he's got other stuff that he's he's, thinking he's about. got a lot going on and i i almost feel like like Padme's wanting to tell him. I would, I would say she definitely is wanting to tell him, but she knowing what's at stake for both herself and him, I'm sure is waiting till the right moment and knowing where his head needs to be. Yep. So yeah, that was, uh, it's odd to say watching animation talking about body language yeah well another great example is when anakin's talking to rex hey we got that thing we got to go do yeah and rex, ah, what? Mm -hmm. uh, i don't he's really just, have time right now he's just giving him looks and it's like wow the animation there is awesome like i'm i'm dude i'm late right I, I, Are we, yeah i'm in trouble <laughs> Dude, she's already pissed. Right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, very well done. And and uh, I don't think I've ever seen animation a character in animation talk out the side of their mouth so well. Right. Yeah. Very good. Very very well done. Yeah, I, uh, seeing this episode and comparing to what we've talked about earlier in the show this week, I, I just wonder why all the announcements and all the, the craziness interrupting this show. Well, I don't Let know. Let the show breathe. Yeah. I mean, I don't know that they're they're thinking about they're, or or they're thinking that they are even going to like, you know, have any impact on the show. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? 
other I, it's I think that's was done for other reasons. I mean, you're talking about the 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 Iger luminous. Stuff. Oh, luminous. That stuff. You know, the thing is they're going to have to like announce it at some point. Yeah. In my opinion, it probably should have been 2 weeks ago. So, yeah, maybe before or 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 at least not like the first week. Like it was yeah. announced before we got this episode. Right. I just I I don't know why you don't let the first episode roll into the second before you start announcing other crap. Yep, I'll agree with that 100% because I think. Especially, especially with the strength of product that you are putting forward with this. The strength of this, you know, of the Clone Wars in these two episodes, the strength of season seven seems to be there. Oh, yeah. I mean, if this is what you're deciding to open the show with, normally shows start slow and build. Right. I understand this is season seven. <laughs> you know, you're not starting the show over, but you're starting the show after a hiatus. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I mean, I, you know, I think, you know, we all know that these, these episodes were kind of, you know, pretty much fleshed out a long time ago, what they were doing with them. They just had to finish the animation and stuff, I think. Right, but I guess my point is this. We know quite a bit about Crystal Crisis on Utapau. Yeah. And we kind of know where that's headed. Those episodes, I feel, unless they did some major overhauls to that, I feel like those episodes are going to feel kind of weak compared to what we're getting right now. Are we getting those episodes? Are we not? I don't know that we are. What were we supposed to be getting? I think we're getting this this arc, and we're getting the Ahsoka arc, to where it's just Ahsoka in the underworld kind of thing, and okay. then the Siege of Mandalore arc. Right. I believe yeah. those are the ones we're getting. I thought we were getting the, the Utapau stuff. I may be wrong. I it's highly likely. Um Yeah, I'm not sure that we are getting that, honestly. I think it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, cuz those those episodes were so close already. I'm surprised that we aren't getting them if we don't if we're not. But cuz cuz we're looking at what? 12 episodes here. And I think yeah. there's only 3 arcs we're getting. So Right. Yeah. Where did I see that? And why am I thinking? <laughs> I'm not sure. I don't know. Cuz I know the 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 Utapau stuff we did get the animatics for like you know years ago. Yeah, released to starwars.com and you know I watched it. It was okay, but All right. Um but I agree, this this right here is like I don't know. It's shaping up to be some uh, some really good Star Wars. I don't know. So we're looking at three, three, four episode arc arcs. Then I, it's something like that. I think. Oh, so I'm looking at the. Episode titles. Uh huh. So it looks like next week we're getting On the Wings of Caradex. Kiradex. Okay. Okay. And then there's Unfinished Business. Okay. So, uh, I mean, maybe that seems like either Echo's going to die and Rex is going to be pissed or. Um, <laughs> Or Echo's going to come in and whoop some ass. I could see that. 
And then uh, the week after that, I, I'm gonna, yeah, you're probably right. Because the episode five of this season is titled Gone with a Trace. Ah. Uh, so, yeah, that's probably going to be uh, Ahsoka. Ahsoka, yeah. And then Deal No Deal. And then no titles after that. Okay. So it's kind of sounding like that is the way it's going to work out then from what we've got so far. Ew. Huh. So I was looking at something else. I see where I got this Crystal Crisis on Utapau thing. Okay. So I, I was looking at something else that has stuff listed. And they had Crystal Crisis on Utapau and The Bad Batch. Right. So these were together on this, so I just okay. assumed. Yeah. I believe both, both of those arcs were released in anim- animatic form years ago. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That's where they were kind of matched up together. <laughs> yeah, and then like looking at this and and seeing what they got, they got the um the stuff about Dark Disciple and how that was an eight episode arc with Asajj Ventress and yeah. Quinlan Voss. Uh huh. I mean, I feel like that should be part of season seven. Yes. I and mean, that would take us to twenty episodes. Just saying. Uh huh. Throw two more in there, you got a full season. Yeah. I think they they are calling it good with the book though. It's yeah, but that would be good to see live. It was it was a good book. Like live though. or in in animation. Yeah, for sure. Hmm. All right. Now that that's cleared up. <laughs> so, like, all I got to say is Wrecker eating like a turkey leg, pressing a uh, a gonk droid one handed. That was impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I just cracked up. It was like, wow, that's interesting. Neat. Uh, he's strong. We get it, right? Yeah, yeah. But afraid of heights. I'm not afraid of nothing. It's just when I get on really tall things, I have this problem with gravity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, to say bigger they are. Yeah, exactly. Or do they fall? He knows that. <laughs> so, of course, a short guy wouldn't be as scared as him. He's not going to fall as hard. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. Um. So, these droids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are interesting. They are they, way that, interesting. Like the head is seen. Uh, maybe I'm seeing that wrong, but it seemed like the head of the droid was a blaster. I think it seemed like there was like, three blasters to these droids. Like yeah, there was something like that. Yes, they're they're very spidery looking, maybe bird like. Mm-hmm. Uh, they had B one battle droid voices but these were something else i'm not mm-hmm. i'm not sure where they came from definitely interesting though although i will say just as easy to take out as a b1 battle droid so yeah you know. nowhere near no <laughs> they're not more effective no <laughs> not at all uh but, you would think with like the length of con- uh, of the conflict, looking at what had the most success, you would think the the droid echoes would oh, yeah. be in mass production. Oh, yeah, it's you know. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's let's, let's uh, <laughs> put some real world spin on this. I can only imagine that the technology involved in building those was far more costly than the other ones. So, therefore, you got more of the other ones and less of these, the droidicas. 
I'm going to go with the guy in charge really didn't want them to win in the first place. <laughs> right. Okay. I like it. <laughs> I mean, not to, not to try and pick the most obvious thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> that is funny. So, I mean, he spent a lot of time just trying to kill the leaders of that thing that he set up. Oh yeah. It, it's, God, I love that about Star Wars as a whole. The art, overarching story of like all the episodes and the Clone Wars and such that that you always have to consider that behind it all there is Palpatine pulling the strings on everything to some degree. You know, he lets a lot of stuff just play out, but you know, and, and, and I would say with all those characteristics of Palpatine, the rise of Skywalker would have been much harder to swallow. Yes, agreed. But that's that. You know, as an audience, we don't know just how detailed he was in on everything. You know, may have had like complete control over the smallest details or let certain things play out and then uh however it resulted used it to his advantage in some way so that's you know well i mean look at the the sentinel droids you know the sentinel droids were created and and there for just for the um just in case he died yeah in order to carry his imperative forward mhm so this guy was always thinking 12 steps ahead right so it's a character that just made it you know easier to swallow when he showed up in the rise of skywalker absolutely um, still weird. <laughs> still weird. I, I I won't. I definitely won't argue that point. It was weird, but uh, weird. But I'm sure someone's gonna come up with a good explanation for that. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's it, it's the explanation's probably already out there. Yeah, that story just, will will just not you know out there for us, right? We're not getting it anytime soon, though. Right. Project Luminous is going to take a front seat to everything, and I think a lot of stuff will be taking a back seat for a while. Yeah, I got a feeling you're right. Which is unfortunate. I I really hope the novelization yes. uh, decides to shed some light on this. The, I mean, the novelization for this film is, is, is probably going to be more important than you know any of them when it comes to the details of the canon yeah i think you're right because there's a lot of gaps to fill yeah i got a feeling that the novelization is going to give us those moments where we can take a deep breath and you know let some of this stuff kind of uh settle in on us where we mm -hmm. didn't have that time in the movie right for sure mm-hmm all right. Well, any 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 final thoughts on a distant echo? Well, I guess overall, I I thought we were going to get, uh, you know, as is the case with a lot of like multi part arcs, like the second episode is going to be kind of you know you come out big with the first one, which they did, and uh, the second one's going to be kind of like a a story building, you know, setting up the further conflict and it's in it can be viewed sometimes as the the mediocre episode, but not in right. this case. This case it was you know, we were getting the sides the side plot the in the and then the main plot is is gangbusters all the way as well. I mm -hmm. was in, I was all in, loved it. Beautiful. 
Yeah, I mean, there was no momentum lost. If anything, it gained momentum. Exactly. And <laughs> that really makes you wonder about uh, the, the third and fourth installments. Like, do you keep that momentum? Does the third episode slow down a little bit? I don't know. I got a feeling that, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> obviously these episodes are leading right up to episode three of yep. Skywalker saga. And, uh, I think they knew these were going to be, uh, you know, pretty hardcore episodes. <laughs> and I got a feeling they are why they made the short list for, this shortened season seven. So yeah, it's going to be a wild ride here. I think Yeah, definitely going to carry some weight. Yeah. With, with, with all the material that was out there and ready to rock, they chose these. Yes. So yeah, I'm with you. I see <laughs> next week's going to probably be even more wild. Absolutely. I can't wait. All right. Well, if you have anything to add, you can always email us, show at the words and more.com. It's the best way to get a hold of us. But we're also on social media. We're at the words and more on Twitter, Facebook.com slash the words and more. You can find all that and all the ways to find the show over at the words and more.com. Uh, any final, final thoughts this week, Doug? No, I think that about covers it. All right. We will talk next week.